مشاهدينا الكرام ويلكم تو ام بي ان ميدل ايسترن برودكاست نتورك اي وونت تو ستارت ويز ابريشيتينغ ام بي ان فور جيفينغ اس ذا اوبورتونيتي تو انترفيو ا فيري امبورتنت كونتريبيوتور تو اور كوميونيتي اور فيلم ميكر جوليو خميس who comes who hails to us from Israel Palestine and as you will see the the uh, he, he has a lot to offer and uh, the uh, most noted is that he is working with the freedom theater that was established in Jenin and uh, this tour that he's taking in the states is to promote that work uh, we'll uh, start with without uh, more details we'll have him give more details ahla wa sahla أهلا وسهلا جوليانو جوليانو أهلا وسهلا على اسم جول واو جول جمال was the first شهيد in the Arab history in 1956 أهلا وسهلا my mother was in love in him interesting my father didn't know but okay now interesting that your mom is Jewish and your father is Palestinian And how did you navigate your way growing up having that formula? Well, I had living in Israel. Yeah, I had a very bad uh, navigation. I was a very bad navigator. I tried both sides. First, I went to the Jewish side, denying my Arab side. Then I went to the Arab side, denying my Jewish side. Now, I live with both sides in peace and harmony, trying to implement what I think in my body, in my acts, in my daily life. So uh, I left the Israeli society. I was uh, an actor, pretty successful. Successful, not good. I don't know. It's up to you to judge. Okay. But successful, I mean, at least my salary can uh, be an evidence for that. Because I uh, thought that uh, It's about time to get out of the fence, not sitting on the fence, and going and do something. We went a few friends to Janine refugee camp, and we are rebuilding my mother's project that was destroyed by the Israelis in 2002 in the big invasion. Now, you, let me ask you, just for the audience, the m your mother's project was established when? My mother uh, went to Janine at the beginning of the first intifada in the 90s. Uh -huh. My mother, you know, she was, uh, she's coming from a very Jewish Zionist family. Mm -hmm. She fought for the establishing of the Israeli state. Mm -hmm. She was part of the Jewish brigades, Palmach, mm -hmm. special forces, the Jewish brigades. Then when uh, she took part in the uh, big Plan D, which was to expel the Bedouins from the southern side of Palestine, while establishing the Israeli state, when she realized that what she has been told was a big lie, I'm quoting her, when she realized that she is taking part in the ethnic cleansing of Palestine, she decided to leave the Jewish brigades and to join the Communist Party of Israel those days. And th what year was that? It was 49. Wow, that yeah. early. 49, she left the Palmach. Mm -hmm. It took her one year to, you know, to navigate, as you said. At the 50s, she joined the Communist Party, where she meets my father. So she became anti-Zionist? She became anti-Zionist, yes. And that's where, where she and your father got married? Yeah. Well, they, they, uh, they fell in love. Yes. I don't think they were, they were married because they were anti-Zionists. <laughs> I hear But you. I'm sure that being anti-Zionist made them meet. I hear you. Uh, but, you know, anti-Zionist, uh, let's just to define this, because a lot of people get uh, anxious when they hear this anti-Zionist expression okay. or term. Being anti-Zionist doesn't mean being anti-Jewish. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean to destroy the Jewish-Israeli nation that has been created during these last 55 years. Anti-Zionist in the way my mother saw it, and I believe my father and me, is uh, making the place uh, 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 big enough for both uh, nations. 
living together, not in coexistence, in existence. Uh, in a, in a, right now, the relationship is that of an apartheid relationship. So do you see it evolving into a different relationship? Well, apartheid relationship is the essence of Zionism. Mm -hmm. It's the separation ideology was the foundations of the Zionist movement. Uh, now would they have the good timing to implement it physically on the ground yeah. by uh, building uh, roads for Jews, roads for Arabs, by the, uh, uh, the putting up the wall and the electric fences, they creating on the ground this separation. But the separation ideology always was, when I was a student in the Jewish school, uh, in, in my studies, I studied Jabotinsky and Gordon, and the they, they all spoke about being us Jews as a wall protecting the West uh, in front of this barbaric Islamic world. We are the barriers. We going to create a European white society in this dark black Levantinos uh, areas. And he is the uh, sort of like the uh, architect of Jabotinsky, may maybe not familiar to yeah. our audience, but uh, he is one of the uh, founders of uh, the Likud party later on yeah. become with Menachem Begin and yeah. uh, Isaac Shamir and so on. I even Jabotinsky was more to the right of these people. Yeah, he's the ideologist of the separation ideology uh, of being a Jewish uh, white ghetto in the Arab world, protecting or de defining the values of the West and spreading it out to those barbarian uh, Islamic... Getting back to the freedom theater that where you are currently involved, uh, tell me about the theater now and why is it important? Hmm. Well, uh, actually, um, now because I think uh, uh, we are uh, facing the, the end of the destruction of the Palestinian people by the Israeli forces, we are in a situation today that uh, not only the political and the economical infrastructure was destroyed, Israel is destroying the neurological system of this society, which is culture identity, communication. We thought that uh, by creating a project which will deal with arts, with cinema, with theater, with uh, multimedia activities, computers, websites, is the best way to fight this deconstruction of identity of the Palestinian, mm. which is deliberately done for the last year by the Israelis. I think Israel uh, is pushing back the Palestinian people into the Stone Age. So the Freedom Theater, uh, its mission is to work with youth, or to tell us a bit more about the it. The Freedom Theater is a cultural center, deals with ages between 5 to 21, I hope in the future more, uh, with children who are uh, being analyzed as suffering from post-traumatic stress disorders, from youth who are hanging on the streets without any place to go or to consume any kind of cultural activities. We are dealing with the traumatic society. We are dealing with, from, with society that lives under siege, heavy siege. You know, Jenin is surrounded with uh, electric fence with two gates. Uh, it's not only Jenin, the whole West Bank is cut into pieces with gates and fences. Uh, it's like a becoming a big prison uh, in, in, in its concept when the Israelis sitting outside the fence and raid the camps or the cities wherever they find it uh, or they want. So uh, we actually give the grounds for those children and youth to practice different elements of life except poverty, violence, and uh, dusty uh, roads and alleys in the camp. How do you uh, fight their hopelessness, given the grim realities and, and what you're very well aware of? How, how do you... It's, this is a very good question because I think uh, this is the most difficult thing that we as uh, motivated, you know, we coming from outside, we are very privileged people. Mm -hmm. We are not been born there, we are not 
we were not raised there, we're not coming from these circumstances. We are more motivated, we are, and we're facing a very deep depression, very deep uh, desperation, very uh, deep apathy, which is the, the, the most uh, natural, uh, uh, um, how you say, reaction to this chaotic situation. And we find it hard to motivate people today in Palestine to any kind of hopeful uh, way of life or a hope in general. People lost hope and I'm not going to pretend here to color the situation in different colors than it is. It's dark. No hope in Palestine. But then what, br what brings hope to you? I mean, how Tell me how you will remain hopeful. I think then. this is exactly the answer. I think this kind of venues, this yeah. kind of cultural activities, stage, lightning, filmmaking, uh, communicating with the outside world, bringing people from the outside world, breaking the wall down, if not physically, metaphorically, is creating the grounds for hope. We cannot bring hope. Hope you cannot bring in a sack of mm. or a package. Mm. You can create the grounds so people can build up hope. And this is our task today, to create the grounds of, for those children. The, the, elder, the, elder, the eldest generation is lost case. they mm -hmm. never going to find hope because I think they saw so much destruction and death that most of them are really, uh, they don't uh, reject, but they don't support. They are apathic. The new generation is hopefully will be we will be able to create for them the grounds to build up a hope to build up resistance to build up I the new identity to build up strategical plans to build up thinking to build up uh, uh, a concept of life who we are how we see ourselves living with the Israelis which rights are we willing to give to the Jews who came to Palestine in 48 or after how we see our life together, everything, I mean, everything was destroyed, I mean, Palestine today is built up from uh, how much we are, three and a half million, three and a half million parties, three and a half million concepts, three and a half million uh, organizations. Everybody is a leader, everybody is a commander, everybody does what he does, because that's what he wants but to but do. But that's not atypical of the uh, Arab culture or Middle Eastern culture, including the Israelis. <laughs> well, it was not typical to Palestine before the Intifada. And as you know, That's true. Uh, Palestine was very unique in its intellectual venues and its uh, uh, modernity and, and its openness and uh, uh, progressive uh, cultural uh, activities. The Israelis succeeded to uh, chop it. And Israel is chopping. So let me make sure I understand. Y your mission at the Freedom Theater is to really resist in a s sort of a different twist different kind of resistance, more or less bring the cultural aspect and have that entrenched in the confrontation through various means in the humanizing the whole question. Is, is that correct? I couldn't put it better than uh, this. Okay. Yes. And, and that really is a valuable then course for us to adopt and enrich. And then tell me more about then your mission here in the United States. Well, let me uh, relate to in enrichment, in, uh, which may be supporting us also. And, and uh, you said every time I want to reach the audience, shall I yes. use this camera? So I'm using this camera. I'm calling for your support. Uh, we have a website, www.thefreedomtheater.org, theater with R-E, the English way. Uh, we need support. I mean, supporting us, and uh, not only us, supporting Ibda, Al Rawa, the Darna, Al Hakawati, supporting this new uh, resistance through art, a resistance through culture, supporting rebuilding the destruction of our identity, which was deliberately made. Our identity as Palestinians was targeted not only our cultural centers, not only the villages and the electricity, the identity. Israelis knew to make us live on our knees, sieged in these walls. They have to bring us into the tribe period of our existence. Mm -hmm. 
So we could not mobilize ourselves for a different kind of resistance. So we could not resist at all to this kind of uh, solution that Israel is now with the Mr. Bush's and this Maryland conference is trying to impose and show themselves again how they care and how much they want peace. But the Israeli peace that will be discussed in this conference is the peace that I am now putting on, on the table, keeping the Palestinians on their knees, sieged behind gates, dealing with getting water and surviving the daily life like animals. So what do you hope to get from uh, the international community? Now, right now, for example, there are sanctions, boycotts, etc. How do you see uh, yourself uh, relating to the whole question of like, uh, the academic boycott in England? Or there is also divestment uh, in, on campuses here. How do you see uh, yourself relating to that? Before, before I answer this question, allow me just to say one more thing, which I think is very important today, and uh, as an honest people, and we must not take out the responsibility out of the Palestinians. We are responsible also for the destruction of Palestine. You are responsible. How so? The corrupted Arab leadership in the Arab world is responsible. The Arab community in the United States is responsible. We played. We were the partners for this destruction. Mm. The Mr. Arafat, during eight years of Oslo, was busy selling the Oslo agreements with color TVs and DVD players instead of creating cultural youth centers, uh, putting people into perspectives, teaching ideology, uh, tactics, uh, where, why, no, eight years of Oslo people were busy selling the agreement so they can ride nice be beautiful cars and uh, make money while, while uh, uh, giving this opium of technology to the people. That's why when the Intifada broke out, the Palestinian people were caught up with the pens down. They didn't know what to do even, how to react to this uh, planned reaction of the Israelis. The Arab world, I mean, this is to, uh, just to see how the Arab world is, is selling itself, to see how the Arab community in the United States went under the table after 9-11, fearing raising their voices, supporting Palestine. I mean, you come to another person today asking to support you, he says, well, I would like to do it very much, but I'm afraid I'm going to be uh, immigrated or ejected. But, I mean, are you absolving the Israeli responsibilities from what uh, excesses and the Israeli all responsibility these is obvious. crimes that they have committed? It's obvious. It's okay. obvious. I mean, I would see it insulting for you or for the audience to me to show the Israeli responsibility. The Israeli crimes are experienced daily, daily on the Palestinian people. There's, I don't think that uh, we have to deal with the Israeli occupation, we as Palestinians as Arab today. We have to build ourselves to face this. We have to be clever enough not to let the Israelis to create this kind of propaganda and put themselves as your victims. How come Israel succeeded in seven years to turn the pyramid upside down? Only because they, uh, we are, why? Us to blame. Israel succeeded in seven years to turn itself to the victims, to the victimized side. Where are the flaws? What, what did we do wrong? What did I do and say in the Arab community and uh, in the you States? Were, you were busy, uh, I think, making money, maybe. Okay. Not you personally. I mean, uh, at, <laughs> least, okay. at least 150,000 uh, Palestinians were brought and dropped on us from Tunis. They were busy making money, mm. not, not teaching my children what would happen when I will be attacked with this big war machine by the Israelis and they're going to put this mask on my face and saying that I was genetically born terrorist and I want to look for the virgin in the sky, this is why I want to kill Jews. What am I going to do with this? I'm going to go blow buses in Tel Aviv? Or I'm going to fight it with poetry, theater? Or I'm going to penetrate the Israeli propaganda? I'm going to be tactical enough, strategically enough to know what I'm doing with your public opinion in the States? Nothing was done. So that's why your emphasis on the identity question yes. and saying that our fight really is a question of having us 
reestablish our identity, defend it in theater and other ways, yeah. such that we arrive at this self-empowerment kind of... Exactly. Is, is that exactly. where we're headed? Exactly, yeah. So yeah. it's not a question of blaming, it's rather a question of emphasis as to where we go from here as to what the right emphasis is. That's what I'm hearing. This is the constructive side of yes. what I'm saying, of yes. course. But uh, to blame is not to complain. To blame is to acknowledge the failure, the defeat, is to be able to correct. If you're going to keep uh, blaming the occupation for everything happens to the Palestinian people, you're going to end up the situation we are today. But not that means that it doesn't mean that we are absolving or accepting the occupation. It's just no, a question no, no, no. of what to do with it. What's we the No, of course, okay. of course, okay. of course. Tell me now, you you have difficulties because you are both Arab and Israeli, or uh, I don't know what you, what you call yourself. But tell me when you go from uh, let's say Israel and you come in into Jenin, then and then you go out. I mean, what kind of? I I have difficulties when I go in. I mean, well, I, I cannot expose question me and so on. I cannot expose the way I go to Jenin because one of the biggest problems that we Palestinians and I have the privilege. It's a gift for me to say I'm a Palestinian because I'm not. I'm an Israeli passport holder, but do I have a choice? I hear you. The biggest problem we Palestinians and we Arabs face as uh, along our history is the problem of collaborators. For some reasons we like to sell each other. You know, in Palestine people sell their brothers for a phone card. So I cannot say how we get in to, uh, and I wish we can speak less about what we do, at least on this uh, levels of, uh, but we are legal, legal uh, venue. I uh, cross to Jenin because I have some privilege. I'm half Jewish and you know the Jewish um, society, at least in Israel, is very racist. But for both th sides you can also gain from it. You know what I mean? No, I don't understand. Tell me how it is. When the soldier right? hears my Hebrew, mm -hmm. He uh, opens up his heart, so I'm, I'm a privilege because I'm a Jew, and uh, that's why I can cross to some places. That's oh. why I'm a little bit more protected than uh, oh, uh, and a Palestinian. And I'm coming from a very known Zionist family. My grandfather was a big Zionist figure. He was a professor. He healed the malaria in the Galilee, mm -hmm. where my grandfather, from my father's side, was expelled in '48. So I have uh, one grandfather coming, immigrating to Israel, to Palestine, kicking out my other grandfather out of Palestine, taking his place. So you're the embodiment of the Israeli-Palestinian uh, dilemma. Well, I you don't live, know. You live <laughs> you're, you're, they are living inside you. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm the nightmare of the Zionism, of Judaism. Tell me more. I'm a walking nightmare. You know, uh, the Jewish religion is a very um, closed uh, religion. The, uh, it's a blood religion. Okay. They don't like to be mixed with goys, with others. So Non-Jewish. Whatever you do, mm -hmm. just stay in the tribe. Mm. Once you leave the tribe, you're breaking the chain of being pure, of being bloody Jew. Okay. And this is what my mother did. You know, I had a grandfather, he was a socialist. He, they called him Dr. Al-Balash. He was treating the Arabs in the Galilee for <laughs> free. He was a very philanthropical person, uh, socialist, uh, lovable, you know. Till his daughter went to bed with an Arab. Interesting. All his socialism collapsed. This animal came out of him. He threw her out of the house. Twenty-two years he didn't speak to her. The community in Ruspina, in the Galilee, where she was born, decided that she cannot enter. They allowed us to get into to this uh, settlement, or Moshava, how they call it, after six years, when my mother begged them that this is the grandchildren they have for the psychological uh, uh, health, they have to see their grandfather. So they decided, okay, only me at the beginning, and then my other brother, and then the three brothers, once a month. 
to see our grandfather because mm -hmm. we didn't know he's so racist. Yeah, the the animal of racism is covered there with the uh, nice democratic discourse. Well, you you know you hear the uh, refrain that Israel is the democracy of the Middle East, the biggest democracy. Right. In the well, East. but tell me t tell me how more you know. <laughs> so you take exception to that. Israel is democratic for Jews and Jewish for Arabs. You know what I mean. Well, n tell me more. The democracy for Israel is only for Jews. Israel is a state for Jews. And Jewish for Arabs. It's only yeah, yeah. Jewish. Israel is a Jewish Arabs state. Are Arab are sick. Look, le let's be, I mean, sometimes I say it's so obvious. The Zionist project is a very simple project. The Jewish people came to Palestine to create a Palestinian, uh, uh, the Jewish people came to Palestine to create an Israeli state. A Jewish state, and they uh, had. There were people without uh, a land, and they went to land without people. Supposedly, that's the. So that's this the is lie. This is what they're doing. I see. Yeah, they want a land without people, so they're doing everything they can to make the land without the people that are that's there. That's the ethnic cleansing that yeah, yeah, yeah. happened my in 1948. My, my and family still was present. my other half. My father's house was spread all over Lebanon, Syria, Jordan in 48. Mm. Now, we only have a few minutes left. So, if you were uh, going to just summarize the most important message that you still want to convey, what would you want to say to our audience? I want to say to uh, your audience that uh, the, uh, we have to acknowledge the destruction, the defeat of the Arab world, of the Palestinian people. We have to acknowledge the reasons for this defeat. Blaming the war crimes or the crimes against humanity that Israel is practicing on daily life is not enough. We've been sold by our leaders. Our leaders are selling their nations, including Abu Abbas and Mr. Arafat. We have to start to look inside into ourselves. What happened there? And say for the Arab Americans uh, who are listening, what would, you be, would be pointers and specifics if now you have any? Ma yeah, well this is, was my uh, last words. Uh, to make this happen, to, you, to, uh, to give us, the Palestinians, the tools to, re to this new research or to building this new building up our identity and our our nation is first practically supporting the Freedom Theater, supporting Ibda Center, supporting Al Hakawati Al Kasaba Theaters, supporting the Palestinian in an active way, not sitting in these rituals, discourses, endless discussions and to get out of the fear. We've been busted by fear. Mm -hmm. We are been the stagnations, the stagnation that happened after 9-11 should be over. We have to go to stand up again on our feet. We are now living on our knees. Thank you very much, Julio. I think uh, I, we have been uh, really uh, blessed to have you with us. And uh, I, on behalf of MBN, I uh, thank you very much. And I uh, thank you for listening. Uh, I am Hassan Nawash, the director of the Palestine Office. Thank you again, MBN, for hosting us.